Welcome to my Pie of the Month series for January, Coconut Cream Pie. We're actually going to start at a point in this video where I've already made the pie crust, but you can find the complete ingredient list and the directions in the recipe, so have no fear. I had just finished rolling out my crust and then used my rolling pin to transfer that crust from my table into my glass pie baking dish. There are actually a couple of mistakes at this point in the video or you're going to see them in just a moment because I'm going to cut the edges off of the pie crust which is something I am advising you right now not to do but in this series we are going to live and learn together and we've got 12 months to get it right. Alright at this point I've got my crust into my pie plate and now I'm going to just trim off the excess here. And I'm going to shape it into a beautiful decorative crust or a crimp edge. So let me explain my mistake here a little bit. I'm actually cutting off the excess crust that comes over the side of the baking dish. But you actually need to keep that and just fold it under because the crust is going to shrink a little bit. So by leaving the extra dough on the outer edge of the baking dish, you have more to work with. You're actually able to use it to make a prettier edge and the shrinkage is not gonna be a problem later, which you're gonna see in my video. And I'm so proud of this moment because I have no clue the mistake that's gonna show up later. But anyway, I took the extra dough and now I'm just going to try to create my own edge. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm taking the scraps and I put them together, put a little bit more flour on them and I'm gonna roll them out and make a decorative design to put on the outside crust of my pie, around the outer edge. I'm gonna cut it in half. One of the main reasons why this is gonna to prove to be a mistake is that it's gonna be very difficult to make that extra crust connect to the crust that's already in the baking dish. They don't seem to wanna to go together. And then I cut both sides so that it is a very straight edge. And now, let's see. I'm just going to attach it to the pie. The crust that's already in there. And I'm gonna use my fingers to really get it incorporated into that other crust. And I'm gonna take the other one. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, and now I have this border. And now I wanna make a design on this border. Today, I'm just going to take the edge of that crust and I'm going to fold it underneath just like this just to make it a little bit thicker. This is the point at which it would have been nice to have extra dough because whatever design you're wanting to imprint on the edge of your pie it will show up a lot better if that dough is thick. And after I get it rolled I am just going to do a crimping technique with a fork. Super simple today. I'm just going to take my fork and I'm going to push down just like this. And I'm going to go around the entire edge to make it really pretty. And when we're finished, that's what it looks like. Now, I know I have some gaps because I kind of messed up on the top of the crust, but that's okay. We're gonna learn together. I know I can make a great tasting pie, but I'm gonna have to work on its presentation. But we have all year to do that. We're starting out strong in January, so we're gonna be so good by December. Now, we're gonna put it in a 375 degree oven after I lay parchment paper in it and put something weighted in here like dried beans. I'll be right back. Parchment paper. Balled up. 
and hold it. And I'm going to push it down into my pie. One of the best weights to use for your pie is dried beans. I don't have any, so I'm actually going to use rice. And I'm just gonna push it down really flat. And our pie shell is gonna go in a 375 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And while that bakes, we're gonna make our creamy coconut filling. I'm just gonna clean this up real quick. Okay, so let's get started on the filling. And the first thing I wanna do is take four egg yolks and a fourth of a cup of cornstarch, and I'm gonna whisk them together in this bowl. This is one of the easiest ways I learned how to separate the yolk from the whites. Got an extra bowl for it, for the egg whites. So I just crack the egg and I just hold the yolk in the side of the shell and let the whites just drip off the side. And then all you have left is the yolk. Okay, so to the four egg yolks in the bowl, I added a fourth of a cup of cornstarch and I whisked it together really well. My camera stopped working, so I, I'm sorry that you missed that part, but all I did was add a fourth of a cup of cornstarch to the four egg yolks and I whisked them together. That's what they look like. And now we're gonna move to the next step. Okay, for the other part of our filling, I'm gonna take a saucepan because we are gonna need to cook this. I'm gonna take one can of coconut milk, full fat, about 14 ounces. This is 13 and a half. Had to get a spoon to get it out. I'm gonna put that, it looks like that. To this, we're gonna add one cup of half and half. Half and half is going to go right in. And then we're going to add two thirds of a cup of sugar. Okay. I'm going to add about a fourth a teaspoon of salt. And we're gonna take this over to the stove to cook it. Since I'm here, I think the pie crust is about ready, so let me pull that out and show you. Okay, I know the edge of my crust separated, but the filling is gonna cover that. That filling is gonna cover a multitude of sins, okay? So we're gonna set it to the side and let it cool. This is where you can really see the mistake earlier of cutting that crust because it did not incorporate together and there's the separation. Now back to our filling. I've got it on like a medium to medium high heat. And what I wanna do is I wanna bring this mixture to a boil. So I'm gonna get it fully incorporated, the sugar, the salt, the coconut milk, and the half and half. You can use a whisk to do this as well. And I'm gonna bring it to a boil for two minutes and then we'll go from there. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'm going to boil it for two minutes and I'm gonna set a timer. The mixture has come to a boil. I'm gonna set my timer for two minutes and I'm gonna turn my heat down just a little bit. And I'm gonna take half a cup of this mixture and slowly whisk it into the egg yolk and the cornstarch. I wanna do this slowly so that they don't turn into scrambled eggs. This is gonna be like a juggling act, okay? So, half a cup. This is how we bring the eggs up to the temperature of the mixture without scrambling them. We do this very, we do this very slowly.
<laughs> I'll depend on you, yikes. All right, once you've got that balloon incorporated, that was exactly two minutes. I'm gonna add this carefully and slowly and let it cook for a minute and 30 seconds. You're actually gonna see this mixture start to thicken up very quickly once you've added all of those egg yolks and that cornstarch to the boiling liquid. So even though I said a minute and 30 seconds, it really is just gonna depend on you, your stove, and how thick that's gonna get and how quickly it gets there. Today, I was actually having issues with that eye on my stove. It would not turn on and off properly. So it was definitely not a minute and a half for me. I had to turn the heat off and just pull my pot up and just keep stirring. Go ahead and remove it from the heat and just keep stirring it for that minute and 30 seconds. This is what it looks like so far. Then we're gonna add a cup of coconut. We're gonna add a teaspoon of almond extract because almond is my favorite. Almond is my vanilla. And we're gonna add half a teaspoon of coconut. Now I'm gonna be adding coconut in here another way, so don't worry, you're gonna get that coconut flavor. I'm gonna give this a really good mix. And then we need to add two tablespoons of butter. That's just gonna add to the creaminess. It's gonna give us a shiny, glossy finish. Keep stirring this and letting the butter melt, and I'll meet you right back here in a sec. All right, so our crust is cooled. And we are going to add our filling to the crust and put it right in there. You're going to have to forgive the blurriness of this angle. It's actually a setting that I didn't mean to use, so it won't always be like this. Smell the coconut and the almond. And I'm just going to spread it out really well. Just overlook the gaps in my crust. I know they're there. We're gonna pretend they're not. It was a mistake. We're gonna get better. Okay? Next time, do not cut your dough. Live and learn. Then I'm gonna spread my filling out, just like this. Okay? And then I need to let this cool completely. And I don't want it to get a skin or a film on top, so I'm gonna take some cling wrap Cover it, but lay it directly on the filling. I'll show you. So I'm gonna cover it. And we're actually gonna press it into the filling so that it doesn't get that skin or that film on it. You know what I'm talking about. Okay just like that and I'm gonna let it chill. It is actually super cold outside, so I'm gonna put it outside on my porch while I make the coconut whipped cream. Okay, let's make this coconut whipped cream. I'm gonna take one and a half cups of really cold, heavy whipping cream and I'm gonna put it into a bowl and to this, I'm gonna add just shy of a teaspoon of coconut extract. And then I'm going to add about three tablespoons of powdered sugar. And then we can taste it after we make the whipped cream. And if we think it needs a little bit more sweetness, we can add more powdered sugar. So one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to take our mixer and let it go. I'm just gonna beat this on high until it forms really firm peaks. 
I want to add one more tablespoon of powdered sugar. And that should be just right. I beat the whipped cream until it's really stiff. I can turn it over and it won't fall out of the bowl because I want to pipe a very pretty decoration on top of my pipe. I've got to cover that crust and I want it to look beautiful. So I'm going to put this into a piping bag and get ready to do that. And just fill it up. You could also add food coloring if you really, but I wanted it to be white. I wanted to make a coconut cream pie for January because January is a time of new beginnings and freshness. And I thought, I want a white pie. Coconut is white. And so that's how we got here. So I don't want to add any food coloring. I wanted this to stay beautiful and white. Let's start working on this pie. Okay, our pie has been chilling. I'm just gonna remove the plastic wrap. No film, no skin. Put our little crust back on. Okay, and now, let's see if we can pipe some decoration. really good. I just hope I have enough whipped cream to cover the pie. If not, we're going to make another batch. <laughs> okay, I finally finished piping on the coconut whipped cream. This is what we came up with and I'm going to top it with sweetened coconut flakes. I can't adequately express the disappointment at this blurry angle, but you will see the finished product in a moment. So, not only does this make it pretty, but it's going to give it more coconut flavor. And I started to toast the coconut and make it, you know, have these brown, tasty little bits, but I really wanted to keep the pie white for January. And I also like the idea that the shredded, sweetened coconut on top looks like freshly fallen snow. There you have it. Pie of the month, January. Clean and fresh like snow, and just like the start of the new year. Clean slate, a beautiful white new beginning, and lovely and delicious coconut cream pie. I hope you make it. And stick around next month for a decadent pie that's perfect for Valentine's. Adios.